Well, look, if it isn't read reviews, gonna cry? Gonna fuck your sheep, maybe? Maybe even put off your Q&A again? Ha ha ha, very funny, prick. I got more important things to do right now than review Reverse Convoy and work on my Q&A, you know? Spending all night in your barn does not count, like, at all. Shut the fuck up! I've had enough of you and everyone else at Darkmount bullying me. I gotta warn everyone about this impending destruction, and yet you still sit here and tease me about my sexual preferences. <laughs> not now, Jimmy! Red, you know we bully you because we love... Wait, did you just say impending destruction? That's kind of quirky though. Yes, impending destruction. Before this year is out, the world is going to end. Did you not see the big round thing in the sky? Is that just the moon, bro? Fuck off. I've got to warn other people. You could stay here and die for all I care. Well, shit, bro. Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Constructicon Long Haul. This figure came out in 2019 as part of Wave 7 of the Voyager assortment, and represents Long Haul's appearance in the 2009 film Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Long Haul transforms into the biggest, beefiest, greenest dump truck I ever damn did see, as far as my collection is concerned. Of course, I can't think of a single other dump truck in my collection outside of a rogue minicon. It's not clearly based on any known model of real-life dump truck, or at least the wiki doesn't give any suggestions, but there are enough details sprinkled all over the body for it to fit in with the licensed alternate modes of, say, Jazz and Ratchet. The ladders flanking either side of the massive gunmetal grille really show the immense scale of this hulking beast, and the cab windows are painted in the same shiny blue as his proletariat brethren. The wheels are immense and rugged as well, though the front wheels commit the disgusting sin of being visibly pegged on. There are some silver pipes and some gunmetal vent detailings on the flanks, and the dump bed has a pristine charcoal stripe along either side. From up top, though, I'm gonna give this approximately 13 yikes. The arms, as you can clearly see, are plainly visible. No attempt to hide them whatsoever. Come on, Hasbro, you did better on Combiner Wars Long Haul, and that figure's trash. And you know the worst part? Doesn't even dump. Ugh. Now, it'll be easy to forgive the lack of any fun dumping feature when you get a glimpse at the transformation. For the most part, it's very simple, yet the beginning stages of the conversion to robot mode get a little cramped. The hind wheels clash mightily with the sides of the dumping bed, making the process by which you're supposed to bring the arms outwards a bit messy. One detail I really love is how the end of the big panels that end up on Long Haul's forearms actually slides out of alignment and flips away. Now that is some engineering I'd like to see more often. It really feels like it came out of the movies. From there, the rest of the dump truck converts in nice large chunks of plastic matter that have clear starting and stopping positions. However, the tab that's supposed to fasten the truck cab section into Long Haul's shoulder hood doesn't quite like to cooperate though the friction of the hinges is usually enough to keep it in place. The legs are some very simple, easy movements, and the head rotation at the end is the icing on the cake. Compared to the other Constructicons, Long Haul is perhaps the most humanoid out of them all. This is not much of a surprise, considering he was the first to be designed back in 2007. Bay vs. Long Haul was actually designed by Josh Nizzi as a work of fan art, which many of you in the audience probably know by now, since my content is directed towards adults, and therefore is, out of all Bayverse designs, perhaps the most evocative of his original Generation 1 form. And by that, I mean he's green and beefy. He's also caked in a thick patina of sculpted detail, much of which is also neatly painted. The wiring on his arms and the inner chest tumble wheel are picked out in silver, while the inner mechanisms of Long Haul's knees are in a dull gun metal. The head sculpt is supremely detailed, with gunmetal accents on the forehead and jowls, though the red eyes are applied a little sloppily. Zooming back out to take the full picture, Long Haul is an unabashed, chunky motherfucker. Nearly every single segment of his squat and stout body is about the size of a closed fist. I exaggerate. However, despite the chunky nature of this dump truck robot man, he's no less posable than his brethren. 
As I just said a few precious moments ago, Long Haul's chunkitude is kind of misleading when it comes to his articulation because, though he may not look it, he is very, very poseable, at least for someone of his stature. His head has a ball joint that can look all the way around, though due to the bean-shaped nature of his head, it may get a little hard to maneuver, especially with all of this gunk around it. All this sculpted detail that can kind of pinch your fingers. So do be careful. I do believe the ball joint stem is on a hinge that can allow it to nod up and down, mostly upwards, though that may just be from the ball joint itself. He has a swivel at the shoulder that can go all the way up until it bangs against this shoulder tire and it can go all the way back until it bangs against said shoulder tire. And it can go all the way out despite all the kibble, so he can T-pose. He has an elbow joint that bends just about 90 degrees. Actually, it looks like it bends more than 90 degrees, which is awesome. He has a bicep swivel that can go all the way around, assuming that the giant panel on his forearm doesn't bang into something, which more often than not it will. But it is pretty easy to get out of the way, as you can see by the T-pose that I just did. He has a waist swivel that is a very heavy ratchet because this ends up being Devastator's ankle joint. So of course it has to be a very clicky ratchet joint. And as you can see, the back kibble can fold up out of the way. And I'll keep it folded out of the way for the rest of this segment. At the hips, they can go one click forward as they are, but if you introduce the thigh swivel, which can go outwards 90 degrees, he can high kick pretty well. And as you can see, he has another swivel just above the knee, or rather just below the knee, sorry, because he has a knee joint right here, which bends 90 degrees and is very appreciable. Sadly, the bend is above the knee, as I was so disappointed to find out, so if you want him to bend his knee while he's doing a high kick, it would look as if his leg is broken, which is a shame. At the toe, he has a toe joint that can move up due to transformation, and bringing in a little bit of that siege engineering, he has a very deep ankle pivot, which is astonishing for someone of this fatitude. Like, look at that, he is limber as can be, ready to take down, grapple, and hoist, possibly, maybe, maybe he'll just die off screen, like most movie Decepticons. Just like Hightower, it'll be easiest to go to Long Haul's tertiary mode from dump truck mode. Basically, the transformation scheme boils down to rotating the dumping bed flanks 180 degrees, then lifting the robot legs away from the truck body. What was Long Haul's hood flips backwards to form a heel spur, and the rear tires rotate downwards but don't lock in place anywhere. Much like Rampage, Long Haul turns into a size a billion sneaker for the Devastator combined mode. This thing is Hugh fucking Mungus. It's all long and straight edged and massive and makes for a sizable footprint. It's too bad that Overload hasn't come out yet, since if he was, I'd have him combined with Long Haul and Rampage for pants mode. Still, I can safely say that Devastator is going to be huge. Long Haul is the best of the Constructicons, easily. He has the best design that can appeal to both G1 hardliners and movie fans like myself, has a fun, slightly challenging transformation, and promises to be the rock upon which Devastator is built. Knowing many of you, your mind is already made up on whether or not you'll spend your paycheck on this lean, mean, green machine. If you're still on the fence, I'd say pick him up. This has been Kick Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.